All right, welcome back. It's uh, Smoking and Toasting, the show that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We are here for show number 148. Our guest, uh, Jason Poehler, and our good friend, Alan Denny. Who nobody cares about. Nobody. And we are happy to uh, have both you guys uh, on the show. This is uh, I'm this here is terrific. Too. Well, you're not a guest though. You're you're here. <laughs> you're here every week, except of course when you're off. You know, crashing uh, conventions in Las Vegas. Then there was that. It uh, wasn't a crash. Well, uh, well oh, kind of, kind of, sort of. You know, yeah. Let me have my uh, disillusions. Here. <laughs> Disillusions of grandeur. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read you a uh, a handful of uh, handful of tequila tweets that went out on or around National Tequila Day. Uh, uh, here's one uh, from Envy to Tropic that says, "Tequila is made from a plant, so you could say I've been vegan so far this weekend." <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, Moody Monday uh, t- uh, tweets, "Me, I'm shy. Tequila, not anymore." <laughs> uh, the here's. Uh, Sabatha Christie uh, tweets, there is not enough tequila in the world to sit next to a couple that feeds each other, but here we are. (laughs) Uh, Spanky McDutcherson tweets, this tequila tastes like my ex wants me to text her. That's, yeah. (laughs) I think I've had that tequila. Thankfully, I I swore that went up. Um, uh, Housewife of Hell tweets, you know who doesn't care if I've showered and put on so-called real clothes? Tequila. That's (laughs) Hilarious. Uh, Lady Lawyer says, me, two tickets to paradise, please. Guy, ma'am, this is a liquor store, not a travel agency. Me, okay, two bottles of tequila then. Thank you. Guy, have a nice trip. Um, And uh, there's a couple of others here. Oh, tequila mixed with Gatorade is still a margarita, right? (laughs) From Steve Olivas. Um, uh, And then uh, tequila is my scapegoat. Um, And then... um, Looking to see if there's anything else I need to share here. Uh, <laughs> Just Linda tweets, they need to put warning labels on tequila that say, danger, do not mix with midlife crisis. <laughs> so so, that, so those are pretty good. I thought, I thought, they, were, thought they were worth sharing at least. So uh, we are doing Smoking and Toasting live today, by the way, uh, from Stogie's, world-class cigars. Stogie's is one of our most favorite places in the world. And uh, thanks to uh, Jorge and the gang for allowing us to come and set up and do the show here. We appreciate, uh, we appreciate that, and we appreciate their store and uh, all the stuff that they do. And Jorge is just one of those guys that's... And the remote lighting. That yeah, is so, just... So the lighting wasn't quite uh, uh, bright enough in here. So Alan texts Jorge, and Jorge on his phone adjusts... Who is, who is like, uh, like 50 miles away. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on his phone, adjust the lighting. I love it. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> mm. So, um, let's talk my father's cigars just a little bit. What, uh, other than the quality of the cigars, which is, you know, obviously something that is pretty much universally agreed on out there. The reviews have been fantastic. Anytime you talk to cigar people about my father, the the you know the conversation's always in the superlatives. But beyond just the quality. What was it that made this brand blow up over the last, what has it been, seven, eight years that really it's, it's come on so strong as a brand? It's come on really strong on the brand over the last 10 years. But okay. I mean, it really exploded in 2012. Um, I've been with the company, or my family's been with the company uh, since, their, since their initiation, since mm-hmm. they uh, came out in 2003. So we've been along for the ride the entire way. Um, I, I, I believe... Yeah, but Ping and his family, uh, Jaime and, and Yanni, his daughter, that they they absolutely 100% dedicate all of their attention to the quality of the cigar. As Don Ping will say, we may not be the best cigar in the world, but there's no one better. And I like that. And there are there are things that I think have contributed to their success. And and I'll tell you that there's there's four things I'd like to tell retailers and consumers at events and. One, they're a vertically integrated company, so they have 100% control over all their production and the quality and the Which, pricing. If you can do that, it's great. Not everybody can, you know, can pull that there off. There are very few companies that are vertically integrated. And by my definition of vertically integrated, it means that they grow and use at least 51% of their own tobacco mm-hmm. in, their, in their blends, that they blend and manufacture their own cigars, and that they distribute directly to the, to the retailers. So there's only a handful of those, and my father and actually La Galera are, are two of them. So my father's cigars grows all of their filler and all their fillers and all their binders. On the binders, we put two binders on every single cigar. 
What's that, what's the reasoning behind that? You mean as in what was the reasoning that they decided to do that? Yeah. I don't know, but I'll give you my best guess. Okay. Don Paping spent 40 years in Cuba as a master blender and roller. Very famous there. If there's an award that could be won, he pretty much won that award there. When he came here to the United States and set up his small factory in Miami, he went into making cigars the only way he knew how, which was a Cuban way. And immediately they started to take off. In Cuba, in the premium uh, cigars, they always use two binders, and they have a certain way of putting the binders on that reinforces or exponentially increases the strength that they provide to the structural integrity of the cigar. Mm -hmm. So my best guess is he did it because he didn't know that other people don't do it that way. <laughs> Makes sense. And, and I'm actually a person who f first discovered this. Um, I think they were introducing... Well, they were introducing a cigar to us, and they mentioned the two binders on the cigar. And I raised my hand at the sales meeting and said, are you guys putting two binders on this cigar? That's pretty cool. And they looked back at me and said, Jason, so we, do it on all of them. we do it on all of our cigars. I was waiting for the duh at the end of that <laughs> sentence, but it didn't happen. And nobody in the, in the group that I knew that they were doing that. And to me, that was a very marketable aspect of the cigar. Um, when they put the cigars on, they cross the veins so they form a mesh. Now, the binder is a backbone of a cigar. Everyone gives right. too much credit to a wrapper leaf, and that's, sure. that is a very important leaf, of course. But the binder is what holds it together. That's what keeps it from popping or splitting, and then it has to you know, burn right. It controls your, the burn. Burn yeah, everything. Yeah. So it's an underappreciated leaf. But when you put two binders on the same cigar and you cross the veins that way, you form a mesh. So it's, it's more than just doubling the, the structural integrity of the cigar. It's exponentially increasing the structural integrity of the cigar. In addition, those two leaves are always different. They're never the same. Maybe a Corojo, maybe a Criollo. It doesn't matter. They're always different. So in addition to the structural integrity that they enhance, that greatly enhances the flavor, the body, the strength of the cigar. Right. Now, the, the largest amount of flavor comes from the wrapper leaf, but it's worth noting that the binder is going to provide a lot more flavor than all of the filler combined. Would that be uh, accurate? He's, I'm gonna he's have making a face. Yeah. I'm going right, to have no, no, issue with your, right, your, right, initial, right, talk to me. your initial statement. The wrapper leaf is important, but I look at the tobacco as, as, a, as a jazz ensemble. Sometimes there's more horns. Sometimes there's more drums. Whatever it is, it, it varies from song to song. And in the blend of a cigar, you can have a very powerful wrapper leaf that does contribute the majority of the flavor mm -hmm. to a cigar, but you can also have a very thin wrapper leaf that doesn't contribute anything. Or you can have filler that overpowers even a strong rap relief. It really, I think that's a misconception. Would that be like having an obnoxious drummer? Yes, someone who doesn't know when to quit, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. What would you know about obnoxious drummers? <laughs> well, they're drummers. This, yeah. is my, this is my opinion. I'm sure people have it, take issue with it, but all of the leaves are, are important to the blend. But the leaf that's most important to the structure of the cigar is going to be that binder. And having two binders, I think, puts us ahead of anyone else. And um, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any other company that does that. Well, I will say this. If, if the jazz ensemble uh, rule holds, uh, then what I'm smoking here, I'm just going to refer to as Miles Runs the Voodoo Down. Because this <laughs> is, it's so complex. And it's got to be, that's got to be something that really adds to the complexity of the cigar. The fact that I'm not getting just one thing coming through here, but I'm getting... Something that not only is challenging me to identify the different flavors and, and aromas that are there, but also is changing as the cigar smokes and isn't, isn't the same in the second, third as it is in the first and so on. And I've had some great cigars that have been pretty consistent all the way through mm -hmm. in terms of flavor, but this is definitely one of the ones, for me at least, and I'm smoking the Judge, um, my father the Likewise. Judge. Likewise. Uh, this is one to me that it... It really kind of evolves as it smokes. Would you agree with that? Oh, yes. That's why I love this cigar. It's, it's a smoother body than, than a lot of the Dom Ping cigars. They mm -hmm. tend to be bold. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a smoother cigar. It's very soft on its, on its body. Kind of Agreed. real smooth out. And as it progresses through the smoke, it kind of builds up to the back end of the cigar. You get rewarded with a, 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 a greater strength than you started with yes. and, and more flavor on the back end of that cigar. So it does has that wonderful transition. So it's not a boring or one-dimensional kind of cigar. When I started off with a cigar, the uh, La Opulencia, which is a little bit stronger in body Wait, overall. What, is that, what does that mean? That's uh, Spanish for the Opulencia. Okay, gotcha. Very good. Yes. Very good. I, I, hey, man, I, I can get around. You know? <laughs> Um, Sorry, I didn't mean to derail you there. <laughs> so, no, but, but what's interesting about a cigar that's strong, a lot of times you get a strong cigar, and I like strong cigars. Um, 
Uh, a lot of times you get a strong cigar, and they can be one-dimensional, which is okay, as long as it's a good dimension to be in. But these tend like, to right? be a little more on the uh, complex side. They have a little more going on, which is, I think, probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think probably a little tougher to do the stronger the cigar gets to make it more complex. I think so. I think that a lot of people overpower cigars, um, try to put too much body in them, and, the, and that the body, which... It's hard to describe exactly, you know, the, the definition of what body is, but right. it's really a combination of all the flavor and the, and the smoke mm-hmm. and, and all of that in there. When you get too much, it overpowers and clouds the, the flavors you're getting in a cigar. I think Don Peping is excellent at maintaining a nice full body in their cigar and strengthening their cigar without overpowering the flavors, letting, it, letting them come out to you. See, I think yeah. body, when you talk about that, my, my best way to describe that would be like that's kind of the middle of the palate. You know, does it have a nice big fullness to the flavor overall, or do you just taste it up front and kind of on the aftertaste? Uh, the body is that middle of the palate that, that you go, okay, that's a very satisfying mouthful, so to speak. Right. Well, if you want to taste the flavor in a cigar, it's very important that you retrohale a cigar. Mm-hmm. Right. So all your listeners out there who are not currently retrohaling cigars, teach yourself how to do that. All right, so I'll tell you what we'll do. When we come back in our next segment, I'm going to have you give us a uh, demonstration of how to do the retrohale. Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that in the next segment. In this one, though, I want to divert us now to the aforementioned uh, Shiner Bohemian Black Lager. And you were talking in the last segment and in the break, Jason, about uh, about your familiarity with this from back when it was first introduced. And it does say what ninety seven on the label. That doesn't mean it came out in ninety seven. So it was their ninety seventh year. Um, <laughs> Uh, they like I said, they put out uh, a series counting down to their 100th mm-hmm. anniversary, which was 2009, and uh, their 97th uh, uh, year they uh, released this one. And I guess it was popular enough that it became one of their core line. I actually have uh, a bunch of stuff written on the back of this here in Shiner, Texas, population 2069. I wonder if they update that if somebody we, moves away. We've been handcrafting hand crafting beer since 1909. The passion of our original brewmaster, uh, Cosmo Spatzel. Spatzel. This is Spetzel. Yep. This is hard to read. Hold on. Yeah, it's it's you know. There it's you it's, go. it's printed in gray on black. So I'll I'll shine a light on it later. Uh, fair, fair enough. <laughs> well, I will just say one of the things that I like best, and certainly I've had this lager before. Um, I, I really enjoy this and several other great black loggers. The raw ugly pug comes to mind uh, because they do pair really well with cigars. Yes, and as much as I love my IPAs, generally my drinking an IPA does not happen at the same time as smoking a cigar because so many of them the the hop bitterness really messes with your ability to uh, enjoy the complexity of the cigar. Um, but this one to me is in a way more like a, a heavier beer like a stout or a barley wine or something uh, gives you gives you some of that underlying um, maltiness that can really enhance the cigar at um, least for me on the back end of this though they uh, they hopped it enough to where it, it finishes with a little of that hop snap so it's mm-hmm. it's like having it's like having uh, you know Guinness uh, extra stout kind of has the same kind of finish that this Agreed. has yes. Um, and even though it's a vastly different beer, this does not have a big, full uh, mouthfeel to it. This is uh, a little bit lighter on the palate as far as the mouthfeel goes, but the flavor is all body and it's all there. Now, Jason, you mentioned during the break you had a story in, uh, involving or surrounding the Bohemian Black Lager. Well, I did. I, I do. I mean, <laughs> when um, I was on the road, I found myself with an afternoon free in, from San Antonio, and I had never visited or paid a pilgrimage to Shiner, Texas. And I mentioned to you guys before the show started that Shiner Bach got me through college. Right. I should have had a degree in Shiner Bach. But <laughs> I decided to go out there and, and pay my pilgrimage. So I stopped at the city limit sign and basically crawled on my hands and knees the rest of the way all the way to the brewery. <laughs> uh, it was the year that they were releasing the, anniversary, uh, the 97 anniversary cigar. So this was the anniversary cigar. It hadn't been released as a regular production yet. And I had a sample of it in the brewery. And I fell in love with it. And I said, I, I want to... I want to have some of this. They said, we're sold out of it. We don't have any in the brewery at all. But they told me about a convenience store that was nearby that might have some. So I drove over to the convenience store and I cleaned them out of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I do that because I had, I did that because I had an upcoming Texas Independence Day party. I do an annual Texas Appreciation Party, usually on Independence Day. Nice. And so it's 
all things Texas. If it's not Texas, just leave it at the door. That kind of thing. Don't come in with your New York Giants jersey, Stuart. <laughs> and don't bring your Coors Light beer in there. It's not going to be welcome. Uh, that's great. So I brought this thinking it was going to be good enough, enough to last me for a while. But I introduced it to my friends on that at that party, and they also loved it so much they drank every last drop drank that I had. And I had nothing. And I thought, this is horrible. They're sold out of it. I'm never going to see it again. So I was so happy when it later came out as a regular, as a regular black label. Yeah. And uh, you are absolutely correct that this goes great with cigars. I, really I haven't drank this in years uh, just because um, opposite you, this was not one of my favorite ones. Uh, it's not that I don't like it. It's fine. It's a, it's a nice beer, but it wasn't one of my favorite ones. And I actually am just a big fan of the standard Shiner Bach. Right. I just think that's a that's a, a great go-to beer. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think I've ever had this with a cigar. And now that I'm having it with a cigar, that's great. I want to get back to you talking about the retrohale a minute ago. So when you retrohale, this is when you breathe gently out of your nose uh, with the cigar smoke. And you pick up on a lot of flavors that way. I will tell you, though, uh, if you've never done this before, do it with a mild cigar first. Yeah, absolutely. Don't. Don't go grab, you know, the biggest... Don't start with a diesel. Yeah, don't start with a diesel and get a big mouthful and just blow it out of your nose real fast because you will suffer for that. It burns a little bit initially. But yeah. after three or four times, it, you'll you'll be used to it again. Right. But you're enhancing. Uh, it was Christian Aroa who first introduced this to me when we were visiting his... Um, his you, know, you were down there, too. When mm -hmm. we were visiting yes. his factory, and I was brand new in the business. I had smoked cigars for many years, but I was new in the business. And I wasn't retrohaling. He pointed out that your nose has more senses mm -hmm. for flavor than your mouth does. You're leaving about 80% of the flavor in a cigar on the table when you're not retrohaling. Right. Mm -hmm. So you really, we talk about flavors and people go, I don't, I, I don't get any of that. Well, you're not getting it if you're not retrohaling. You know, uh, beers, uh, whiskeys, and, uh, and a lot of foods are the same way. Uh, and I'll, when I'm trying a beer or when I'm trying a whiskey, and I'll coach people a lot of times if they're asking me, well, what, how do I try it? I'll always take a mouthful, swish it around, enjoy the flavor, and then after I swallow, gently breathe out your nose. You pick up a lot of flavors that way, and cigars are no exception whatsoever. Absolutely. You know, that was one of the most um, enhancing pieces of advice I'd ever received smoking cigars because it really did after that it changed every cigar changed for me way to appreciate it, it yeah. really did i didn't realize how much i was giving up on the cigars i what was I only would, really enjoying 20 percent of them what i would compare it to is if you've always had just sort of like a crappy to standard stereo and then one day you go out and buy some really really good stereo equipment and you go back and listen to some of your favorite songs favorite albums and you are able to appreciate things in them that you've never really heard before. To me, that's, yes, that's, that's, that's kind of the, that's uh, the way that the retro hail can, can improve your... Uh, it's still the same music. It's still as good mm -hmm. or, or not as it once was. But you're able to appreciate it on a much deeper level because of, uh, because of your enhanced understanding of what that is. So we'll have you walk us through how to do it. Step by step. I don't know how to do you it. Don't know it, how it, to it. Do I know it. that you you close you close your throat with the back of your tongue. You pull it in there, and then you just push it through your nose. Now you don't want to inhale the cigar. No, so you, no, no. You're not inhaling way, in your lungs at the all. The best way I can tell you this is: you take your normal puff, and then you you gently and I usually it feels like almost like I'm pushing it with my tongue. You gently push it out through your nose as you exhale. Pull it into your mouth, and then just. Do Don't not, inhale anymore. Just immediately start to exhale through your nose, mm -hmm. and it'll come right out. All right. I tell you what. You guys practice. We're going to take a break. <laughs> we come back. I want to talk uh, E.P. Carrillo a little bit, what's going on there, or at least as much as we're uh, allowed quiet. to talk about. Yeah, because I'm worried about Alan. He's been way too quiet so far in the show. No, you no. You feeling okay over there? I am doing great, but I have we're been on We're just not used this. to you on, no, the, uh, I, on, the, on the quiet. Thing. I have been on this show numerous times, thanks to my friendship with y'all, but y'all wanted to. Jason's here to talk about my father, right. so and La Galera, and his. I, I will tell y'all one thing that I don't know if you knew or ask him the history of his family in cigars. I it was goes way ask back that, before actually. him because right. I actually met his dad long before I'd ever met him. I didn't meet Jason until I was managing a shop, but I had met his dad at certain events, and uh, even after his dad, his his dad was in the industry for a long time and retired. And so 
after his dad retired, and now he is a regular at one of my favorite shops in Dallas. He's up at Kale's place all the time. Moving, do not go in on movie night and talk. Rick, Rick Poehler will tell you, you need to be quiet. We're trying well, to watch a movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I was going to say, that, that's fairly consistent, actually, among any of the uh, cigar shops that do movie nights. Somebody will shut you down if you go in and talk during the movie. Of course, it depends on what the movie is. I guess. Well, you'll yeah. do that in any movie theater, too, won't you? <laughs> right, yeah, <absolutely. laughs> Although, sometimes it can be fun when people are talking to the screen. Sometimes. Don't go in there! Don't go in there! (laughs) Exactly. You don't know what's behind that door. Oh, you're going to (laughs) die. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back in the next segment. We'll be tasting uh, the Citra Drink from Levante uh, Brewing Company. It's a New England-style pale from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, And more cigar talk. And uh, also, we'll try to get into this 30 beers that changed America. I think this is going to be a very interesting list. I'm interested in you guys' feedback on this. Have you looked at it already? I've glanced at it, but I couldn't. I couldn't tell you from memory what's on it, so uh, so we'll all be surprised together. Uh, coming back uh, in just a moment, it's Smoking and Toasting, brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant, 1814 Washington Ave in Houston, in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, 